Hi there, welcome to a special tutorial from easyprogramming.net. Today I want to lay some groundwork for a future tutorial series in JavaScript. Uh, one thing you will most definitely need to know is how to use the developer tools in your browser, uh, more specifically the element inspector on the JavaScript console. Uh, today I'll cover three parts of the element inspector and go a little over the JavaScript console. More on the console will come later on. Uh, so what is the element inspector? Uh, the element inspector is part of a browser which allows you to view and even modify the DOM. Uh, also known as the document object model, which means that you can use the inspector to create, edit, and even delete DOM elements on the page in HTML. You can also create, modify, and delete CSS, and with the JavaScript console right here, you can run JavaScript commands to do your bidding. Uh, all major browsers have an element inspector of some sort, and I'll be using the one included in Chrome. Uh, you can do this in Firefox, Opera, or whatever browser you prefer. Uh, the inspector will look similar. Uh, you can also use plugins like Firebug to do what you need to do. And the Element Inspector allows you to troubleshoot items on your web page very easily from help with help from these various sources, including the Sources tab, uh, the Network tab, and all else. We'll go over those later on. Uh, to start the Element Inspector in Chrome, you can do it in one of three ways. You can right-click anywhere on the page and click on Inspect Element. You can go to your Developer Tools. Uh, the options right here, click on Settings, More Tools, and click on Developer Tools. If I click it now, it'll shut off. Or you can do Control-Shift-I. This is in Chrome. Uh, in Firefox, it's actually Control-Shift-Q, and it should be the same for Macs and PCs. But don't take my word for it on the Mac. Just try it out. Uh, so what you see here is what the DOM looks like. This is everything the browser sees, and this is everything that you see. So the browser is taking all this HTML code, and is rendering it for your human eyes because let's face it not everyone can read HTML. Uh, we're gonna make some edits just to show you how powerful the element inspector can be and how cool it can be. Uh, let's say I want to edit the title here. Uh, there are three ways that you can do this. Uh, the first way is to just navigate through the HTML here. They're, they are collapsed so you'll have to find your way through uh, which can take some time if the page is really long. Uh, the second way is to click on this little uh, icon here, this cursor icon. It says select an element on the page to inspect it. So if I click on this, uh, my mouse here becomes a special tool that allows me to go through the different elements of the page. And it has a little blue overlay uh, over the elements that I'm looking at. And as you can see in the element inspector, it's changing as I'm moving my mouse around. Pretty cool, huh? The third way, usually what I do, uh, I would highlight what I want to edit, and then right-click and click on Inspect Element. And it takes me to the exact location in the HTML where this is. And as you can see, just by double-clicking here, I can actually start making edits to it. So hello from the Element Inspector. I click Enter, and it changes the text right on the page right in front of your eyes. Uh, the one thing you'll need to know is that this is not actually making edits to the page itself to the file itself. It's only affecting the DOM that you're looking at. So if you refresh the page, your edits will go away. So I'm just going to refresh here and show you that it will go away. And there you go, we're back to normal. So you can't really do any damage, but there are some cool things that you can do. Uh, one example is let's say you're working on a website and you need to show your customers what it will look like but you haven't had a chance to finish. So you can come to the Element Inspector, make some quick edits. You can add some stuff to here, and then just show, take screenshots and show, and this is what it'll look like, this is what we're working on. Pull the console here. Let's say I want to edit the little video here. I'll click on Inspect Element. So it'll take me to that container, that div. I have it here. So if I want to edit that video, I can actually change the URL and insert another video here. So this is another video. This is another tutorial of mine and I just changed it right in front of you right on the page. Pretty cool, huh? I think so. You can also change the width and the height. Let's say I want, you know, 500. It's not going to look very pretty. Actually, that didn't change because the video wrapper, the height and the width is relative and it's 100%. So if I turn those off, on the right hand side it's a CSS, so you can edit the CSS. It looks, it looks a little ugly. So I'm just going to re-enable those. There we go. Pretty cool, huh? Again, if I refresh, it'll go back to the original video. 
so you can't really do any damage. So if the site that you're editing has, uh, you know, a server-side script such as PHP, you can't actually edit those PHP scripts. The only thing the Element Inspector is good for is HTML and CSS. So I encourage you to go to any website. You can come to my website, easyprogramming.net, and just mess around with stuff. Just start making edits, start adding things. You can do a lot. Uh, let's say I want to change the color here. I'll just click on inspect. It'll also take me to the CSS where this is. So it says font size is 30. Let's say I want to change this to 60 pixels. See, it changes right as you're doing it. Uh, let's see, I want to change the color to red. Can't see it right here. There you go, it's red. You can mess with the HTML and the CSS. Uh, let's say you want to add another element. Uh, on the very right hand side, you have these little uh, ellipses. Uh, if you click on here, you get more options. You can also right click, you get the exact same options. You can also edit things as HTML, so that means you can actually edit the tags in them. So if I want to edit, add in a div ID, let's just do ID, ID equals to my title. I just have to click out of it and it saves. There you go, the idle, the title. Uh, the reason I did this is because I want to show you that you can do things using the JavaScript console as well. So we'll do just click in here, document dot get element by ID. Do my title dot inner text equals to let's say uh hello from the JavaScript console. Let's see what this does. Let me actually change this to HTML. Yep, somehow uh, my hidden class was entered here. Just gonna remove this, and there you go. Hello from the JavaScript class. So of course, I messed that up. Uh, let's I'll just do text. The JavaScript console. So inner text, inner HTML. Uh, we'll learn more about that later on. Let's say I want to edit. I want to add add an attribute to this block quote here so I can do like I did the ID I can do ID equals to uh, my body there you go I added the ID uh, the reason you may want to do this to see how uh, the CSS looks so I'm gonna come over here I'll click on this little insert style rule here it automatically selects the my body for me the my body ID and I'll do color blue There we go. Pretty easy, right? And again, if I refresh, it's all gone. It's all back to normal. Um, the next thing I want to cover here is uh, the Sources tab. The Sources tab is a great way to debug uh, the files that your website is referring to. Uh, you'll find your HTML, CSS, any 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 file that loads on this page, including JavaScript, uh, this is where JavaScript will be debugged. So I'm just going to open this this box slider here. So I have the JavaScript file. You can use things to debug here. Uh, I'll go over this specific part later on when we're actually working in JavaScript. Uh, but for now, I want you to know that you can come in here and look at all the files that are being referenced in this in this page. Uh, again, if there are server-side scripts, you're not going to see it. The only reason you see this PHP file is because it's actually the name of the of the page itself. You can't actually see the PHP code. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is the network tab. The network tab is a really great way of figuring out why things aren't loading, why things are slow. Because uh, on this column here, the time column, it tells you exactly how long each file has taken to load. I have a lot of things here because I have uh, Google Ads and some other external plugins, but my page files should be up here. So these are all the files that are being loaded from within my URL. So these took a while. Uh, overall, the time took about, I'm going to close the console, it took 1.4 minutes to load, which is a long time. Uh, I can tell you that it's not my site, it's some of these plugins.
why Google why well anyway you can uh, you can filter based on what you're looking at XHR is an XML HTTP request uh, which is Ajax uh, JavaScript all the JavaScript files that are being loaded here CSS uh, if you're working on a CSS file and you, you're wondering why the style isn't taking you can come to the network tab go to uh, filter by CSS and make sure your CSS is actually being called if it's not being called you need to check your references make sure it works all the images media fonts documents uh, web sockets manifest and everything else another cool thing about the network tab is you can also play with the speed you can simulate uh, various internet speeds uh, if you don't do any throttling that's the default it will use your full internet speed but let's say you're also coding a website for someone in an area that only has uh, you know regular 3G see so if I click on this and I click on refresh you can see that it's taking much longer to load and that's because I'm downloading everything at 3G yeah, and that took a while right. That took 8.41 seconds to load. It seems faster, but you can also do custom. You can add uh, um, add a different speed. I'm gonna do no throttling. You can also disable cache. If you think cache is a problem, you can disable cache. Click on install, and all of your statuses should be 200. 200 means okay. Means it's it's actually grabbing the items from the server. There you go. That took 5.11 seconds. Pretty good. Well, uh, anyway, I think I have prepared you really well uh, for the JavaScript tutorial series that is coming up. Uh, please look forward to that. And I would really advise you to just go anywhere to any website and play around with the element inspector you can come on easyprogramming.net and just start messing with my pages I really don't mind feel free to take screenshots and show what you've done uh, just just practice with it because in JavaScript it will come in handy and then later on we'll go really deep into the JavaScript console and I'll also show you how you can make edits to your page dynamically without ever needing a refresh uh, well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. Uh, even if you knew how to use the Element Inspector, uh, this should be a good refresher for you. If you have any questions, if you want to see me cover a specific topic, please let me know in the comments below. And remember to visit my website at easyprogramming.net. There are a lot of tutorials on C++, Excel, and another tab will be added for JavaScript really, really soon.